Hey there, I'm Sean Faulkner with Skyflow. Today I'm going to be talking about how to keep sensitive customer data, so things like people's names, email addresses, phone numbers, and so on, out of your data analytics pipeline using a data privacy vault. So before we jump into the solution though, let's talk a little bit about the problem. So I've drawn up a pretty simple analytics pipeline here that you could create using Amazon Web Services or probably some other cloud provider. We have three different sources. We have a database, which could be our application database. We have a CRM for our customer data. And then we have a bunch of flat files in the form of CSVs. We have an AWS Lambda function that gets triggered whenever new data gets added to any of our sources. And then the Lambda function writes that data into a Kafka stream. We have another Lambda function that is a consumer for the Kafka stream, takes the events from the event log, pushes the data into our data warehouse. And then we probably have things like BI tools, marketing automation, data analytics, and so forth that depend on the data in the data warehouse. So what is the problem here? Well, the problem is from these different sources, we probably have a bunch of customer data, people's phone numbers, email addresses, that's being pushed down and stored in our data warehouse. So we have a bunch of PII coming in here from all these different sources. And this PII is being copied down into our data warehouse. We probably have multiple copies of the same information. We probably have an email in our customer in our CRM, and we probably also have their email in the database. So those emails, those phone numbers, those names and so forth are being put down into our data warehouse. So why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem for a couple different reasons. One is that if we need to comply with certain privacy laws that have things like data residency, well, now it becomes a real challenge to disentangle all of our customer PII from our existing application data and then regionalize it based on where those customers are in the world. And we'd have to create different data warehouses for each of those regions. So we'd have a data warehouse in Europe, one in you know, Brazil, United States, and so on, and split the customer data as needed. And then additionally, we have probably things like BI tools and analytics dashboards that are using the data in the data warehouse. And that puts some of our data at risk because we're probably showing emails or phone numbers in some of those dashboards and the people within our company can see that data and they probably don't need to necessarily have access to that customer information. You know, you could have all the security in the world around this infrastructure. Someone takes a screenshot of their dashboard that has your customer's phone numbers in it. Maybe they store that on their laptop or they upload it to an S3 bucket, which is gets misconfigured or maybe it's open for sharing. And then you have a data leak or breach situation on your hands. So that's not good either. So how can you solve this problem? Well, you could say, we're not going to pass any PII down into our data warehouse. So that certainly solves the compliance issue because you don't have any sensitive data over here. So that's no longer a problem, but you're probably storing PII in the data warehouse for a reason. You need to use that information in order to drive certain decisions for your business. For example, you might have a customer success dashboard that identifies customers that are at risk of canceling their service. And then maybe your customer success people reach out to those customers to try to rescue the account. Well, if you don't have a way of identifying who those customers are, you've kind of lost the utility of the, the data that you're collecting. So it doesn't make sense to completely remove the PII but we still want to protect it. We could add you know, some sort of encryption layer here to make sure that the data isn't stored in plain text, but that causes additional issues where the data warehouse is probably expecting the data to be in certain formats. Maybe an email looks like an email, a phone number looks like a phone number, and now we're replacing it with random bits. That might break the existing schema. Additionally, we still need to utilize that information in some way. So to use encryption, we're gonna to have to do things like key rotation and make sure that we're using the right encryption algorithm and that we can decrypt it when we need to and that there's permissions around that. And you're essentially locking down access to all these different points in the infrastructure. So it gets complicated pretty quickly, even though it might add a layer of privacy. Deletion becomes an issue as well. You still need to delete the data and all the copies, even if it's encrypted from all these different sources. So it solves some of the problems, but not all the problems. So how can we solve all the problems in a way that doesn't add a lot of complexity to this? Well, we can do that using a data privacy vault, and that's what we're gonna get into next. All right, we're back. All I've done is clean up the diagram a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work with. And just to recap where we were, we have a bunch of PII coming in from our data sources. It's being copied down into our data warehouse. We wanna stop that from happening because that introduces a lot of problems. So how can we do that? Well, we can introduce a data privacy vault 
to store our customer data and essentially stop storing the data in the data warehouse and store it in this data privacy vault. And the place that makes the most sense to do that is up here where we're first encountering the PII that's entering into our pipeline. So we're gonna add the vault here. And this vault is going to become the single source of truth for all of the customer PII. So we're decoupling the application data from the sensitive data. So immediately that makes it much more easier to deal with something like data residency because we know all the customer data is stored within the privacy vault and we can split that out into different regions if we need to. We can create a data privacy vault for Europe, for Brazil, for United States, and so on. Now, we also need to store some representation of the customer data in the data warehouse because the schema for the data warehouse already has things like names and email addresses and phone numbers defined within it. And we don't wanna break the existing infrastructure or any of the dependencies on it. So what we can do instead of storing the plain text values is we can send tokenized versions of the data to the data warehouse. So instead of a name in plain text being sent into the data warehouse, we could send a UUID where through detokenization can be mapped back to the name, assuming that the service asking for the detokenization has the rights to do that. So the first step here is let's replace the sensitive data with tokenized versions of that data. And for columns that require certain formats, like a phone number, we can use format preserving tokenization where the original phone number gets swapped out for something that still looks like a phone number, but doesn't actually map to the initial user. And if we go back to our use case that we talked about, the customer success dashboard, where our customer success agents want to be able to identify customers that are at risk of canceling their service with us and then contact them, we can still serve that use case without exposing that person's e or the customer's email because we can still drive that dashboard. And when our customer success person needs to trigger marketing automation, the marketing automation can talk to the vault, detokenize the data, and then send that email. Or even better, the marketing automation can send the tokenized data to the privacy vault. The vault communicates with the email service, detokenizes the data, and then none of the, the sensitive data or the email in this case ever touches your backend infrastructure. So that is a very quick introduction how you can use a data privacy vault to keep sensitive data out of your data warehouse. If you wanna learn more about Skyflow, check us out at skyflow.com. And we have an example implementation of this available for Amazon Web Services that you can find on our GitHub page at github.com slash skyflow API. And remember to move fast, but don't break privacy.